right. Take your Bibles, if you will, turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. I want to speak to you this morning on uh, spiritual pole vaulting. Spiritual pole vaulting. And by the way, I want to thank President Trump for saying that today, May 24th, is the day when churches should be allowed to reopen. And uh, the Attorney General has agreed to uh, support that and go after any governors who don't want to cooperate on that. So thank you, Mr. President, for making it possible for folks to come. Our church has never closed. We've stayed open during the whole time because uh, there are no exception clauses in Hebrews 10.25. And there are no exception clauses in the First Amendment. So uh, government does not have the right to tell churches they cannot meet. And uh, so we have consistently met and have uh, been blessed in many ways. Spiritual pole vaulters. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. It's a lengthy passage, but I want to read it. Beginning in verse 15. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe, according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His right hand, in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. When I read that passage, I was thinking of... Uh, what the Apostle Paul is saying to these people, they, they have uh, been practicing their faith, and Paul says, now I'm going to pray for you that you'll go even higher, you know, that you'll, you'll get even stronger. Uh, years ago, a uh, pole vaulter by the name of Armando Duplantis, uh, he uh, held the, pole, the world pole vaulting record of 20 feet, 2 and 3 quarters inches, at uh, 20 years of age, he broke the world's record and set a new standard for those who would follow him. In David's song of deliverance in 2 Samuel 22, David says this about the Lord, For by thee I have run through a troop, by my God have I leaped over a wall. That's in his song of deliverance, 2 Samuel 22, 30. He repeats it when he writes the 18th Psalm in verse 29. For by thee, O Lord, I have run through a troop. By my God have I leaped over a wall. So let me ask you a question. Uh, do you know what you were saved for? Uh, most people I've asked that question respond very quickly. Yeah, I'm saved so I don't go to hell. <laughs> and it is true that if you are saved, you're not going to be going to hell. And if it's flames, you're going to be going to heaven through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That is true. However, here's another question that I ask some of those very same people. If you were saved only to keep you out of hell, why doesn't God take you to heaven the instant that you're saved? And usually when I ask that question, they shrug their shoulders like they have absolutely no idea. They have this nonplussed look on their faces like, I have no idea what you're asking me. Well, I want to speak to you this hour about rising to the occasion, becoming a spiritual pole vaulter. Before uh, Duplantis broke the world record for pole vaulting, people came to him and said, you know, the old record is superior. Nobody's ever been able to break it, and you certainly won't break it. However, he did. And then this is interesting. After he broke the world's record, he came back the same week, the end of the week, and broke his own record by jumping 22 feet, 3 and, a, and 7 tenths inches. Well, you know, somebody said this years ago, those who say it can't be done will usually be patched up by somebody doing it. Okay? And uh, why are you saved? Why did God send His Son to the cross, to die on the cross, to take care of our sins? And why does He leave us here, sometimes facing some of the greatest difficulties that the world and Satan can throw at us? Well, the Apostle Paul 
answered that question in the, uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he wrote from prison on death row in Rome. And here's what he said. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. After salvation, you and I are left here on the earth for the simple purpose of glorifying God. That's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. Glorify Him in the way we dress. Glorify Him in the way we talk. Glorify Him in our attitudes. Glorify Him in our faithfulness. Glorify Him in speaking to others about it. You see, the vessel with which you and I are to glorify God is this body in which we live. So when told it couldn't be done, Duplantis rose to the occasion. The question is, are you ready spiritually to rise to the occasion and glorify God by leaping over spiritual walls that others tell you can't be scaled? Paul wrote to the Ephesians and told them that he was blessed by what he had heard about them and he was encouraging them to set the bar a little higher. <laughs> it sounds like Paul saw spiritual record setters in the Ephesian church because he praises their past performance and challenges them to jump even higher. You see, the central figure in the Ephesians 1, 15 through 23 passage is the only one that can help you scale the walls. The central figure is Jesus Christ. So if you want to leap over spiritual walls, you can submit to Jesus Christ as your personal trainer. And in this passage, Paul includes a purpose clause that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance is in the saints. But a lot of Christians never go beyond their salvation. They walk the aisle, fill out a form, say they're trusting Christ as Savior, and then that's it. They never do anything for the Lord. They never win a soul to Christ. They don't spend any time in prayer. They don't read their Bibles, and they just simply kind of free wheel with whatever direction the flow of the world is taking them. They're saved, they're going to heaven through the shed blood of Christ, but they've settled into an empty and unproductive contentment. They're not in spiritual training for anything. They have not submitted to the trainer. They haven't exchanged their will for his will. They're not looking to break any records. They just prefer sitting on the bench. And with this attitude, they will never rise to the occasion spiritually. They will never leap over walls for the Lord. They're headed toward embarrassing their trainer, not in glorifying him. So let's rise to the occasion. Let's say, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. So here's the outline for the message this morning. Number one, the walls are out there. If you haven't already noticed that, you will pretty soon. But I'm surprised, would be surprised if people in this audience this morning uh, have not already faced your walls, right? God has engineered our lives and everything we are facing, no matter how difficult it may be, we are not expected to be whiners, but we're expected to be vaulters. <clears throat> Chambers says, Oswald Chambers, in my utmost for his highest, May 15, listen to what he said. God is the master engineer. And he allows the difficulties to come to see if we can vault over them properly. By my God, have I leaped over a wall in the quotation. So don't expect to be shielded from difficulties just because you're a child of God. You'll never know the depth of your hope in God until you've had some vaulting experience. The Apostle Peter wrote in 1 Peter 4.12, Beloved, think it not strange... Concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing had happened unto you. No child of God escapes the life with walls that have to be leaped over. Someone said this, and I thought it was good. God loves us too much to give us only level ground and straight paths with no obstacles. By my God, I have leaped over the wall. So the walls are out there. You're going to encounter them. Number two, the enablement is available. The enablement is available. 
You know, every coach wants to magnify uh, his, his uh, people that he's training and working with. And most coaches desire to manifest themselves through the athlete that they're training. I remember when I was in high school, I wasn't much good at uh, some of the um, sports I participated in, football, baseball, and basketball. Somebody asked me, what position did you play? And I said, bench and all three. <laughs> but uh, I really could run. So I went out for track, and I competed well. I did. I competed well in the high jump and in the 100-yard dash. And what I really liked was the cross country, two and two-tenths miles. We ran in high school, and uh, my coach said, he kept telling me, you can do this, you know, you can do this. And so in the competition that we had, my school I went to was Andrew Jackson. The school across town was Robert E. Lee. Big competition, Lee versus Jackson. And we had a big, big competition set with Robert E. Lee High School. And uh, I represented Andrew Jackson, and I remember we had something like 25 or 30 people from both schools competing. And I finished first place and set a new record for the two and two tenths mile. And the amazing thing about it was the coach rushed out, threw his arms around me and hugged me, and he said out loud, we did it, guy. He was saying, I had a part in it, you had a part in it. You know, God wants to manifest himself through us. Just like the trainer, the coach wanted to manifest himself through his player. God gave you your body, and get this, God gave you the body you have with all of its problems so that you could glorify him by how you deal with those problems. God flooded your life with those disappointments so you could glorify him by your response to those disappointments. And God allowed some winds of adversity to blow through your life just to see if you knew where your refuge is. What God is doing in us is not visible to others unless we work it out. I like the way Chambers puts that too on that same devotional page. He says, you cannot do anything for your salvation, but you must do something to manifest it. You must work out what God is working in. End of quotation. Francis Havergale wrote a beautiful song. He lived 1836 to 1879. He wrote, Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with praises, Lord, to thee. Take my silver and my gold, a lot of might would I withhold. Take my talents, Lord, and use every one as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. God working in us is all the enable that you the enablement that you and I need to work out his manifestation. Well, let me give you number three. The success is guaranteed. <clears throat> God is the master trainer, and what he does is he matches walls to our level. You see, success must be interpreted the way the Bible presents it. In uh, Joshua chapter 1, success is simply obedience to the Word of God. And obedience at each wall is a test of our obeying God. God does not compare our performance with another spiritual athlete. God does not challenge us with a wall beyond our capacity when we trust Him. It does not matter how the next challenge hurts us as long as how we perform allows God to manifest himself through our mortal flesh. Elmondo de Plantis did not vault over a 20-foot pole the first time he picked up the pole vaulting pole. His coach started him out on a level low enough to reach, but high enough to challenge. 
Step by step, level by level, that young man moved it up, moved it up, moved it up. And the same is with us, step by step, level by level. We learn spiritual vaulting, which results in pleasing our coach. You know 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Can I uh, <clears throat> give you my version of that? Here it is. There hath no wall been placed before you, but such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who will not put a wall before you above that you're able to vault, but will with that wall also provide help that you may be able to scale. Chambers gives us another challenge. He says, remember what you're saved for, that the Son of God might be manifested in your mortal flesh. Bend the whole energy of your powers to rise to the occasion every time. Well, David's words should echo in our ears, should reverberate in our hearts, and should drive us to say, as he did, by my God, I have leaped over a wall. Well, let me give you the last point. Number four, the reward is promised. Fascinating to read the Old Testament, but we're reading the Bible through as a church this year, and I'm now in uh, Nehemiah. But in Numbers 18.31, I read that God spoke to the Levites who were serving as priests and taking care of the work of the temple, and they were provided a certain amount of food from the sacrifices. And God says, And ye shall eat it in every place, ye and your households. It is your reward for your service in the tabernacle of the congregation. Ruth 2.12, Boaz told Ruth, he said, The Lord recompense your work, and full reward be given to thee. Why? Under whose wings thou art come to trust. David said in Psalm 58.11, So that a man may say, Verity, there is a reward for the righteous. Solomon said in Proverbs 11, 18, But to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. Jesus spoke of a reward in heaven for those who endured the trouble on earth. Matthew 5, 12. And upon his return in his Father's glory, Jesus said that he would reward every man according to his works. Matthew 16, 27. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul describes the specifics at the judgment seat of Christ. And he places there the picture of rewards being granted for faithfulness and service by believers here upon the earth. Both Paul and Peter recorded references to crowns being granted by God in heaven for those who have been faithful in serving him here. Faithful service on earth is for us like Duplantis's scaling the 22-foot pole. He received an earthly medal for his vaulting. But you and I, we're told, are going to get to heaven. We will receive a crown that fadeth not away, Peter said. So my question is, are you eager to be a spiritual pole vaulter for God? Are you eager to vault over the walls that he places in your pathway? Be a spiritual vaulter for the Lord. Let's stand together for prayer. Father, we're so grateful for your willingness to support us and encourage us. We're so grateful that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins and made it possible for us to repent and trust his completed sacrifice so that we can go to heaven. And now here we are on earth, facing wall after wall after wall, and we ask you, dear Lord, to help us to be those who are willing to scale walls, not to be... This is Pastor Guy Goodell thanking you for tuning in today to our program. I hope it was a blessing to you. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I hope that you'll do that today. And also want to thank you for tuning in to the message today, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. Please consider joining our church uh, for worship on Sunday.